everyone, welcome back to Elise Reads and Speaks, and thank you for joining me for this fourth day of Vlogmas. So, you may have seen my second day of Vlogmas, where I talked about the 14 books I read in November, except I didn't actually talk about 14. I talked about 13, and I completely forgot one, and I need to mention it, and I'm going to talk about that one today because I really enjoyed it. So today is going to be for the Buffy the Vampire Slayer lovers. So if you are not a fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I'm gonna be honest with you, this video, not for you, all right? Feel free to stick around if you just wanna hear about this book that I loved in the Buffyverse, but if you have no interest, I completely understand. All right, so the 14th book that I did not mention <laughs> that I read in the month of November is In Every Generation by Kendara Blake. So I needed to request this book as soon as I saw it on NetGalley. I needed to. One, because it was about Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and I am a big Buffy nerd. And two, the author is Kendara Blake, who is the author of the Three Dark Crowns series. I love Three Dark Crowns so much. So when I saw that this author was doing something in this universe, I needed to request it. And I will say, I was not disappointed. I was not disappointed at all. But, for somebody that is not into Buffy picking up this book, they're not gonna like it, all right? So if that pertains to you, don't start Buffy the Vampire Slayer by picking up this book because no, like it's gonna make no sense to you, the humor isn't gonna make sense to you, it's gonna come off really campy and you're not gonna get it and you're gonna hate it. I don't want you to hate it. I don't want you to hate anything about Buffy because Buffy is wonderful, okay? So if you have the inkling to be introduced to Buffy, Start with the show, start with the TV show, okay? Just a little note. But for those of you that are into Buffy the Vampire Slayer, let me tell you about this book. So in every generation, the premise is that there was this Slayer convention that all the Slayers go to. Let me just preface this right now. I'm gonna give major spoilers about the Buffy the Vampire Slayer TV show. So if you have any interest in watching that and you don't wanna be spoiled, just turn this off now. If you've watched the, the TV show all the way through, stick around. Okay, so spoiler is coming. Here is your warning. Okay, so at the end of the TV show, and do you remember when all the Slayers were called? All right, all of them, so Buffy just wasn't the one magical Slayer anymore. It was everybody that had the potential to be a Slayer was called as a Slayer. So in this book, in every generation, this is after the fact, so every Slayer has been called by this time. However, this is like, I, I believe, 16 years afterwards, because the, the main girl in here is in high school, and there have been no Slayers called since that time. Okay, so the, the big finale of the TV show, since that ending, no other Slayer has been called. Okay, so they're not getting any new Slayers. They're not dying as rapidly as the Slayers used to do, <laughs> so that's good. There's still a lot of Slayers in the world, but nobody new has been called for over a decade. Okay, you following me so far? So all these Slayers go to this convention and we find out some big baddie evil, which always happens on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, has exterminated all the Slayers at this convention with an explosion, all right? So any Slayer that went to this convention no longer exists and all the Slayers go to this convention. So all the big bad evil people are thinking that no more Slayers, this means fun, we can do whatever we want because no Slayer is gonna come after us. However, because of this event, a Slayer is called. So after a decade of nothing happening, a Slayer is finally called. And that Slayer happens to be Willow Rosenberg's daughter. Ha, I love it. So because she's Willow's daughter, this means that she is half witch and now she's gonna be half Slayer. So she's coming into her power. She's figuring out like the witchiness and the Slayerness at the same time. There's a new pack of Scoobies. Oh. I love it. So it's like Frankie and her dorky friends become the new Scooby gang. However, that doesn't mean that the old characters aren't around. I already mentioned Willow. So Willow is here to guide her daughter. You know who else is back? Oz. Oz is back. I have always loved Oz. Listen, I know Willow is a lesbian, but there is a part of me that will always want Willow and Oz together. And I feel like if this happens in this series, <laughs> and Willow realizes that she's bisexual and it's okay to go with whatever way you want. I'll be so happy because I just love Oz. I love Oz. Okay, I digress. I digress. Anyway, he helps out the Scoobies 
There is also Xander and Dawn. Now I will say one of the best things about this series is that Kendara Blake must have realized that nobody likes Dawn. Nobody does. The worst character addition to any show ever. So you know what she does? She sends Dawn on a trip with Xander to figure out what happened to the Slayers and we don't have to hear from her for the rest of the book. Fabulous. Wonderful. When that happened, I realized that Kendara Blake was a true fan and she agrees with the rest of us that Dawn should not exist. Oh, and there's also Spike. Spike is a watcher. I know, so fun. And the best thing about Spike's character in this is that he takes on the role of the librarian at Sunnydale and it's not it's not like regular Spike looking like a librarian. They like change his his look and I'm saying this like I can <laughs> I'm watching a TV show and I can tell you what he looks like. But no, but in the the book it's described that they completely change what he looks like so that he kind of fits into the background or the mold of being a librarian at a school. It makes me think of that episode um I think it was called Tabula Rasa when he was Randy Giles. I don't know, it just made me laugh and I was like, oh, this gives me all the feels. I love it so much. Now, I was hesitant going into this because it's hard to do Buffy right, you know? Like, there's a lot of things that go into that. It is a cheesy, campy show, but it's still got that feminism behind it and you pull for every single character that's in there because you just grow to love them all, except for Dawn. Um, so I wasn't sure if she was going to do it right. And I will say, I was very, very pleasantly surprised. I thought she really captured the cheesy, campy humor. Now when I say words like cheesy and campy, that might not sound like a good thing. But if you know Buffy, like that, that's what it is, you know? If the, the apocalypse calls, beat me, like stupid stuff like that, but you just, you learn to love it. And I felt like she didn't shy away from that. She, she put a lot of that stuff in here that anybody that's not into Buffy will read it and roll their eyes. But anybody that is into Buffy and loves it and craves it, you'll read it and be like, wow, like she really stuck close to the universe, you know? I was so impressed. I was so impressed. And this is why I had to make a special video just about this book, because I can't even believe that I forgot to talk about it. It was so good. I ended up giving it four stars instead of five, because, you know, as much as I want to give it five stars, just in my head, it's a four star book to me. I don't know. But four stars, I mean, it still, it still means that I really, really enjoyed it, and I will read on. So here is my, my prayers to the gods of the Buffy universe. Please continue on making Kendara Blake write this series. I know that there are other authors out there that will probably want to write for the Buffyverse, but I just feel that she did it such justice. Like she, she wrote her book and didn't put her own author spin on it to make it like Three Dark Crowns. I mean, she stuck true to the Buffy world. I really felt like I was reading a continuation on from the series without it seeming like something was out of left field because some author just did what they wanted. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense because I'm not saying that it's not unique to this author, it is, but I felt like she took the fandom into account and she wanted to do it justice and she really did. <sighs> okay, I guess that's enough raving about this book. If you are interested in Buffy the Vampire Slayer and you have watched the whole television show, read this book, tell me what you think, can't wait to hear about it. That's all that I've got for you today. Thank you for tuning in to Elise Reads and Speaks on this fourth day of Vlogmas and I will catch you next time. Bye.